Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, we're in 2023. That's 50 years after the end of the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. And it's the 50th anniversary of the POWs coming home from North Vietnam and across Southeast Asia. So a lot of celebrations going on. But I want to pause because the 28th, which was yesterday, was a national day to honor Vietnam veterans. You know, Vietnam veterans in general were not welcomed home. Quite often they were even spit on. They were told not to wear their uniforms in certain areas because the anti-war movement had really put a bad face on the Vietnam veterans. I want to say to the Vietnam veterans, welcome home and thank you for your service. I'm sorry that you haven't been more welcomed over the years, but now I know that people are welcoming you and saying thank you, and I want to join in that crowd. The POWs were welcomed home, very well welcomed home. Uh, a lot of that had to do with the wives and what they did for us uh, while we were prisoners of war and missing in action also. Some of the husbands didn't come home. In our latest book, this book will be out in May, the end of May. It's on sale now on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. But this book, about the love stories from the Vietnam POWs, we talk about how what the wives did and the families did to really make our situation more aware. Our government, they changed the policy. They put pressure on the communists to change the treatment that we were receiving. And because of that, they stopped the torture. And so the last three years we were there, we were living in a more live and let live environment that enabled us to come home in a much more healthy way and then to be welcomed home because they had so much publicity about the POWs and the MIAs. Now, in this book, we talk about love stories, relationships. This is captivated by love or ca yeah, captured by love, <laughs> inspiring true romance stories from Vietnam POWs. But we also talk about lessons of love that are really for all relationships. And one of those is trust. Trust in the POW camp was very important. Trust in a marriage relationship is very important also. Trust in the workplace is very important. Trust is so important in every way because it actually frames the pathway for everything at work and relationships anywhere. So today I want to just briefly touch on a couple of things. But as I start out, I want to share with you just a couple of three sentences about the trust that happened for a POW wife who was a husband was a POW for seven and a half years. Wes was the best husband and father I can imagine. Before he went off to war, he sat down with me and explained in meticulous detail how to handle the practical side of running a household, how to handle money matters, and so on. It is important to note that Wes did not tell me what to do. He asked me questions. Most of them began with what if. I would think on my own and then we would discuss each issue. He was not controlling or even managing me. He was teaching me how to make my own decisions. This preparation made my early adjustment to being an missing in action, MIA wife, much easier than many wives had it. That's the first story in this book uh, from Wes and Faye Sharman. I lived with Wes for several years, and so I know him well. I really want you to understand that those lessons that we learned in the POW camp apply in relationships at work and home. Well, think about trust. It's so important in every situation, especially at work. And in thinking about that, we think first of integrity. Now, we have developed the honor code. It has seven articles. The center one is courage, because without that, you won't be able to do the other six. But keeping your word and being honest and so things, those things are so important. Another one, number two, is to do what you say you will do. Keep your commitments at work, at home. And when you can't, tell somebody. You know, our POW leaders were so great because when they were tortured to do something that they didn't want to do and they could make them do something and they wouldn't let you die and they gave them something, even though it might not have been of value to them, they came back and told us exactly what they did 
and how they were so sad they weren't tough enough to beat them. Well, we all went through that, but the fact that our leaders came back and told us they couldn't keep that commitment all the way, the way we all wanted to, gave us courage and inspiration and a good role model to trust them and believe in them. And finally, to communicate, you've got to share, just as Wes and, and Faye were sharing in discussing situations, let people know what the issues are. Help them you know, guide along because you're discussing what your expectations are. You're listening to what their barriers are to meet those expectations. Maybe you can coach them or help them. But don't let them be surprised because you know something that they don't know and you haven't told them because then they start to back away and and trust becomes an issue. So make sure you have good communications that keep people on board with what's happening, what the boundaries are, and what the expectations are. Trust is so important at home, at work, and everywhere. So be sure to focus on trust and be sure to also go ahead and order your book. I think you'll really enjoy it. Lots of POW stories, great uh, stories of what the wives and women did back home to change our treatment, and also how we came home and have had great relationships since. Take care and God bless. We'll see you next month.